where other shows give me a spurt of entertainment we spread around in liberal doses. It's not just a TV show for our viewers, we actually ship them out here for a seven day stay. Here they enjoy offshore breezes, hearty agadu sing-alongs and the chance to find that elusive gold sticker for their Italian 90s sticker album. So let's go over to Games Master for the first challenge. Welcome to the Games Rig for another batch of video game teasers. For tonight's first spree, I thought we might go racing on Mario Kart. The evening's premier contestant needs to win the Mushroom Cup, the first race on the 100cc class. A little tip, if you acquire a red Cooper shell, don't hesitate to hurl it at your opponents, as it will cause mayhem on the track. <laughs> Most amusing. Rev up, please. And carting around with Mario and his menches tonight is a young man from Kingston. Please welcome Peter Walters. <laughs> Peter, this is this is a drive. This all oh, right, thank you. This is a racing game, Peter. Do you yeah. drive yourself? Well, not at the moment, no. But hopefully in a couple of years. Hopefully in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, who, and you can choose different characters on this. Who have you plumped for tonight? Well, I'm going to be a Cooper Trooper, which is sort of turtle person. And what's what's good about him? Well, he can corner well, and he's got the speed to overtake people, so it should be all right with him. Okay. Well, I hope you do very well. If you'd like to take your place in the games playing chair and get ready to rev up. Tim Boone, main man at NMS, is with me at the side of the racetrack. Again, Tim, welcome. Dominic, hello. Now, Tim, any tips for young Peter here? Yeah, he's picked the Cooper Trooper, who's one of the sort of bad guys of the race, a little bit heavier than most, but he's got a lot of power. And if he uses a bit of patience, he can really steam along. But my best piece of advice, really, is cheat whenever you can. OK, some wise words from one of the bastions of British industry there. <laughs> OK, Peter has to come first in the 100cc division Mushroom Cup race. Peter, are you ready? Yep. Then off you go. Okay, so here comes Peter revving up at the start. He's in eighth position at what, the beginning. What he's got to do very quickly is forge his way right through to the front, right about right here. Okay, in the bottom you can actually see a map which details each of the cards. You can see Peter weaving his way up there. He's doing quite well. He's up to fourth already. He's up to third. Brilliant start yep, from the nice, grid Nice, nice start now, but he's gone to the side. Now, you can see the box at the top. Uh, if, he's got, now got a selected special weapon, which is now banana skin. Now what will that do, if he drops that, the person behind him, with any luck, will hit him and spin off. Okay, well, he lost a bit of ground there, but he's back up to fourth. He's yep, on the second lap position. here. Not doing too bad. Just taking over Princess Daisy. Not too bad. Okay, now he's gone off again. He's going to lose speed, but yep. every skid's up the track there. Check out what his special weapon is this time round. And it's another banana, banana skin, skin again. Yes, he's dropped it. Now, those banana skins stay on the track, so he could actually slip up on them himself. Absolutely. Okay, uh, he's up in the second. Oh, he's back in third now. He goes. Okay, he's been knocked off the track, but he's yep. been knocked up in the second place. Oh, he's back in third now. Like I was saying, the important thing is cheat whenever you can. Knock people off, cut corners. Now, he's got a green one, a green front. shell here. Oh, he's flinged that away. It's bobbing diagonal all over the place. No, I think it's a It one. might rebound back on him. Okay, he's on four oh. laps. It's a five-lap race, and he's back in the fourth place now. Oh, yeah, oh nice second. Bell. He's second now. What is going to say? One of the press. Went off the track, but no. it didn't Oh, he's slowing down. Oh, a big shortcut there. He's in second place. He's got to finish first. He's coming up to the final lap now. I think he can do it. If he keeps his wits about him, he can do this. If you look at the map at the bottom, it's Luigi. Go on, he's him. almost there. Here's Luigi, just Luigi's there, he just can do it. Oh, he's gone for track. Oh, can no, he take him? Track. Come on, he yes, can do it. Yes, I think he can do it. No, Luigi, I think he can easy in first place. Yes, gonna... No! Oh! So, unfortunately, Luigi just put Peter. So, Peter was second. Very good, but not good enough. Round of applause for Peter. <laughs> The 
we're getting a little bit carried away if you know, it's the excitement, you understand. All right, thank you, that's quite enough, all right. Now, Peter, you had a brilliant start, you tore off the grid there, it was so close, look at that, 13 hundredths of a second. But what, why did you lose those 13 hundredths? Well, basically, I was battling for th against third and fourth, and I got past them in the end. And at the end, I actually could have won, because I had a, a red tortoiseshell, which is a bit like a homing missile. But unfortunately, uh, Luigi was invincible, so I could have just got him at the end, but I shot it too early. That's the story of my life there, Peter. Well, listen, thanks very much. Have you enjoyed yourself on Games Master? Yeah, it's brilliant, thanks. We've enjoyed having you. Another round of applause for our Gallic competitor, Peter Walters! As a succulent appetizer to this week's Celebrity Challenge, let's go over to the panel for this week's reviews. This week, gear shafts, burning rubber and lots of oil. No, it's not Frank Bob's boudoir, it's driving games. First up, slip inside three of the world's fastest motors for an ample portion of speed in Test Drive 2. The graphics are extremely jerky for the Super NES. I mean, this machine has got some of the most advanced custom chips in it, and they're just not being used in this game. The, the way the cars handle is very, very poor. I mean, they s sort of slide about, and when they slide about, the sound effects sound like a load of dogs barking down the bottom of the drain pipe. I thought it wasn't that bad, although uh, it was more interesting when you're driving in severe weather conditions with manual gear change, but isn't it always the way? Next up, don your overalls for dirt track shenanigans in Super Off-Road. Boys, this is one for you if you fancy being lured to another level by a busty blonde stroking your trophy. I was interested to see how they actually crammed the tiny sprites down into the game gear and what they've actually ended up doing is scrolling the screen as you move around. And it works, it works really well. All the fun, all the thrills, all the power-ups are there to be enjoyed. And overall, it's really good. Finally, rev up your monochromes for a portable play with Jeep Jamboree. The graphics are neat and the way the car handles takes a bit of getting used to it. It seems like it's sliding all over the place but it actually handles quite realistically. The game wasn't very challenging at all really. <laughs> Come on now, settle down. The landscape's all a bit samey though, although the graphics are quite nicely detailed. You get more characters to the power than you do in Test Drive 2 for instance. Jeep Jamboree is a welcome breath of fresh air. smorgasbord of reviews and features there. Now before I pass out from the noxious fumes emitting from the bowels of Auntie Mauritius kitchens, let's find out what tonight's celebrity challenge is. It is with considerable excitement that I introduce my second challenge for tonight's symposium, Catch the Flag. Two warriors will fight it out in a head-to-head -head battle over three minutes. The object is to inflict as many hits on your opponent as possible. And an array of weapons, such as axes and crossbows, can be picked up to facilitate this task. And good luck. For this challenge, Oxford lad Andy Thompson wanted to be pitted against a real celeb and a half. Well, we've complied, and it's Australian soap opera teen sensation time. You may know him as Ryan from Neighbours or Simon from Home and Away. Tonight, he's playing himself. So please welcome Andrew Thompson and Richard Norton. <laughs> Now, first of all, Richard, thanks very much for taking time off. I know you've got a busy schedule. When you've got a little break, what, what games do you like to play? Well, uh, I've tried Sega Mega Drive, yeah, like Sonic the Hedgehog and, uh, and Road Rash is the other favourite. Like yeah. a bit of speed then? Yep, Richard. down the line, yeah. <laughs> now, what about this virtual reality malarkey? Well, I've had a couple of goes, but uh, yeah, it looks like a lot of fun, very tricky. Yeah. All right, well, listen, let's hope we do well tonight. Let's go on to your opponent now. Andy, I know you're an Oxford United fan, so you're used to living in the realms of fantasy, yeah? Well, I don't think that's quite true, Dominic. I think you find we're tough and aggressive in the true spirit of English sporting tradition. Uh, yes, quite. Right, Richard, I'll let you do the honours. Pick a colour. Uh, I'll have to go for the yellow one, I think, yeah. All right, then, Richard in the yellow, Andy in the blue. Now, while our two competitors get to grips with their helmets, if you'd like to see if the London Road bravado of Andy Thompson could tackle the antipodean might of Richard Norton, join us after the break.
Welcome back. Tragic Oxford United fan Andy Thompson is about to take on our special guest, home and away and neighbour star Richard Norton on Catch the Flag. With me in the commentary box is Stephen Bethlehem. Welcome, Stephen. Good evening, Dominic. Now, Steve, they don't actually have to catch the flag in this game. Just no. knock seven shades of shush out of <laughs> each other. That's right. Any tips for them? Well, strategically speaking, they both need to head for the crossbow, which is in the centre of the arena. There is one each, uh, and obviously with that, they can take each other on without any of this messy hand-to-hand -hand business. But they can also perform quite well with the chopper, nonetheless. So I've been told. Okay then, so both our competitors have three minutes in which to inflict as much damage on their opponent as possible. At the end of three minutes, whoever has the most kills wins the game. Are you ready guys? Best of luck, don your helmets and come out fighting. Okay, and off they go. We can see Richard Norton's score is in the yellow. Andy Thompson's score is in the white. He's running for it already. Andy's in the green, he's running. He's had enough already. I think he may have picked up the crossbow on his way though. There, yes. Oh, he did smart move there, but oh no, he hasn't. No. And that's first hit to Andy Thompson. Yes, he got the first hit. I think he sneaked behind him and got him with a chop. I think so. It was a loop. I think so, yeah. Now you can see Ryan's got the crossbow. Richard's got the crossbow. Richard's got the crossbow. They both got crossbows. They're both firing. And I they're think both they're missing, actually. Just yeah, I think Richard's got the advantage in height, though, although he's coming That's down right. the stairs. And he's stuck behind a pillar here. Oh, he's hiding behind it. But I think he's so. knocking his crossbows in there as well. Yeah. Not oh, the most effective of cover. <laughs> oh, they're right next to each other, but they're both missing. Oh, oh yes. No. Richard, Richard one got one. one, one all. That must have been right in the face, that one. Now again, it's Andy up top with Andy. He's coming down the stairs. Sending it the meat. Locked by the pillar. Richard, there's a pillar in between them now. Oh, it's, it's a cat and mouse game, Dominic. Oh, Look at this. Give a side. Oh, 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 missed. Andy, dummy. Went one way, then went the other. Yes. Yes. Oh, two all. Oh, they both two got each. That's the first dummy there. Anything from Oxford's done for years. <laughs> All right, so it's two all here. We can there see Richard at the top. Andy prefers the bottom here. He's running, he's running across. <laughs> he's trying to draw his fire at Dominic. Trying to draw his fire across. Oh, he's been picked up. That's yes. the pterodactyl. That's right. Steve. After eight shots, the pterodactyl swoops down and picks you up and drops you somewhere else in the arena. Okay, we are into the final minute now. It's two hits apiece. Now Andy's going to materialise here. There he is. There he comes, dropping out the skies. He's got his chopper in his Richard's, hand. He's lost his Richard's his sighting up here. Now he's this. gone for the crossbow. He's got the crossbow. Here comes Andy now. Oh, oh the pterodactyl's got Richard. <laughs> oh no, Andy's left there. Where's he going to drop him? Oh, oh. blood curdling screams there from Richard. Okay, 34 seconds left here. There's still two hits of pieces. It's very, very close. To it is indeed. I don't see who's going to come out on top of this. Here we go. Andy's sticking down. Top. Andy's coming up to us in the There's a the shot. Crossbow. Full shot. Oh, firing here. Full shot. They're so coming in for closer left. shots. They're coming in close here, there's not a lot of time left. Oh! Oh, that's Andy! Andy! Andy gets it! 3-2 and there's only 11 seconds left here. Rich is going to have to move quickly once the level is. Where can he find his opponent? There he is! There's Andy, he's coming in. Andy's Four, just got a three, three, two. He's got to shoot now! No! Oh, yes! He did it! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God. Richard Norton levels it, which means the challenge is a draw. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant, that. All right, behave yourselves. Actually, Richard, that's the first draw we've ever had on Games Master. Can you believe it? Well, yeah, well, I mean, with a competitor like Andy, I mean, well, from Oxford, too, I mean. Well, that's right, let's yeah. talk about Andy. Obviously, um, the Golden Joystick must be one of the first trophies Oxford's had for years. Yeah, it's for a long time, but I have to say, Dominic, I'm sick as a parrot. <laughs> uh, he just wouldn't stand and fight, and so I left myself open, so it was okay, a very okay. lucky draw. <laughs> All right, well, as a result of the first ever draw in Games Master, it means we have two Golden Games Master Joysticks. <laughs> Special guest, Richard Norton. Now it's time for Games Master to answer your pitiful cries for help in the consultation zone. Hello, Games Master. 
Welcome to the helipad for another batch of bonding. How can I be of assistance? I keep dying on crack shots on the Mega Drive. Can you help me? I suggest the following. Enter Dracula's castle and proceed until you reach a large pile of barrels. Using the bubblegum blaster, hit the last barrel on the second row and you'll reveal an extra life. If you wish, you can then leave the castle and proceed the process to build up a healthy reserve of lives. Thank you very much, Games Master. The pleasure's mine. Who's next? Hello, Games Master. On World 2-2 on Super Mario Land on the Game Boy, I can see lots of coins beneath me, but I can't get to them. What should I be doing? There's more to this problem than meets the eye. Simply step off to your left. If you have faith in my advice, you'll land on an invisible ledge. You can then run right to collect all those seemingly unreachable coins. Have you got that? Thanks. That'll help me a lot. I know. And who's last? Hello, Games Master. How can I be of assistance? On F0 from the Super Nintendo, I have heard there's a shortcut on the Red Canyon 2 course on the King League. Where is it, please? Ah, yes. This one's a hoot. Race boldly along the straight, but instead of turning right at the end, carry straight on and hit the turbo button. You will hit a hidden jump pad and soar over a huge gap. You will bounce from an arrow, which in turn will propel you back onto the track a good few places up the field. Great, thanks. And that rounds off tonight's tater tates. But if you need assistance, you know who to ask. My delight at seeing some more happy customers is tempered by the ominous smells wafting up from Auntie Mauritius' kitchen, telling me this show is nearly over. So let's hasten along to Games Master for the final challenge. For this evening's last escapade, I've opted for an old-fashioned game of pinball on pinball fantasies. I've selected the party level, and contestants have one ball each with which to obtain the highest possible score. Lip off. For this challenge, we've got another one of our family battles. So please welcome Nino Martino and Angelo, the Guardiano triplets. <laughs> Martino, welcome Angelo. See, I've got all the names right. All right, now have you ever thought of joining in a circus with a name like the Gaudiano Triplets? No, no, no. No? Too good. That's right, it was a stupid question. Anyway, never mind. Okay, listen, who, do you guys all share the same console and fight over it, or have you got a console each? No, I've got just one console, we'll share it. Okay, so I think we'll have you, Martino, going first, then we'll have you, Nino, and finish up with Angelo. So if you'd like to prop yourself down, Martino. I'm joined by Dave Perry from Super Pro. Welcome, Dave. Hi, Dominic. Now, Dave, any tips for the triplets here? Well, they've only got one ball each, so there are two ways they can play it. They can either go for all the big bonuses and hope to blow the others away, or just go for the simple points and hope that the others make mistakes. So each of the Guardiano triplets has one ball. Whoever gets the highest score wins the challenge. Martino, are you ready? Yep. Then ping that ball. Okay, yeah, I'd like to see him to use this top flipper. He didn't use it there, he's been a bit cautious maybe. A million points. He's oh dear, it's whizzing around there. No, he's going to watch it! Hitting, that's all right. ridiculous. He's, he's got 20,000. He's got a loop. Oh, he's got a loop there, that's going to give him some points here. That'd be some nice bonus points coming oh, in. Oh, I was looking at the back out to the flippers. Been quite Lovely. fortunate. He almost got up the sky right there for a thousand, hundred thousand. He's in the arcade, but the arcade button wasn't late, so he wasn't activated, so he didn't get a jackpot machine. There he goes. It's he's been very unlucky. He's hitting everything, but what counts? Oh, he's got it there. The snack no. thing. He's got to hit the ducks at the side the, first. That's, that's the right, ducks. The ducks are going to be lit up. Oh, that could go down the middle there. Yes, oh. it's down the middle. Unlucky. So Martino's shot is over, and he has scored 191,880. Very creditable first ball from Martino. Bad. So if you'd like to make way for Nino now. OK, Nino, off you go. There goes Nino, comes down. He did it a bit too late. He tried to go for the flipper. He tried it. But bless him for trying, Dave. Absolutely. Did his best. Oh, another much. Oh, he was oh, very lucky. Oh, he was lucky. He didn't go down the side. Went down the side passage. Tried for the sky road then on the arcade machine. Still not getting him. Once again, hitting lots of little things. Nothing very important at the moment, though. Oh, I thought he's doing all right. Oh, he's got oh, him there. 250,000 now. That was a beauty. For the loop. what he needed. Just missed another one there. He's up to 296. He's in oh, the lead off. He's having a bit 300, of 300,000. down the side. Oh, he hit a duck then, I think. Yeah, that's the Now he can go that snack thing at the side. The snack was lit up. Oh, he nearly got it there. Oh, but that's it. But he's taking the lead there. 
Nino's got a 15 odd thousand bonus, his total score 338,150. Nino very takes good. the lead. So, Nino, if you'd like to make way now for Angelo, our final competitor. Now, they say Angelo's the best player out there. He's the one that fancies himself a bit, isn't he? That's he's, right. uh, he's the favourite on this game. Okay, so Angelo, off you go. Nice to see a big bonus. Again, they haven't gone for that top uh, left flip. Oh, yeah, that flipper. Missed out on the millions. Oh, he's got oh, a sky, sky ride. ride. That's beautiful. No, no he's, he's lit the, one of the puke letters. If he gets all four of them, that must he be a million or something. That's right. All four puke letters is uh, actually a five million bonus if he puts it in the dragon's mouth. Oh, brilliant. So he's going to be looking for that. He should go for that one. He's oh, got 195,000 more. Oh. I can't see it. That puts him in second place. Not good enough to beat the 330 odd thousand of tonight's winner, Nino. <laughs> okay, let's quiet it down a bit. Listen, well done, all three. You did very well. Let's start off with you, Martino. You were first. 191,000. That was quite a good score. Were you pleased with it? Yeah, well, I could have done better, but you know what I mean? That's life. That, that is like, very wise for such a young man there. All right then, who was next up then? It was you, Nino, you were our winner eventually. Was it easy to beat your brothers? I knew at the end of the day I'll, become, I'll come out the winner, you know. All right, have you got anything to say about that, Angelo? I thought you were going to push him quite harder. You were the one who said you were the best player. I'm, uh, I'm very upset. <laughs> you're gutted? Yeah, I'm gutted. Oh, well, you're going to be gutted even more as Nino gets presented with the Golden Games Master Joyce Day! <laughs> Well, the dinner gong brings another show to an earth-shattering climax. I've got no time for any supper tonight, I'm afraid. I've got to catch a chopper to Birmingham for the three-day extravaganza that is Games Master Live. Unfortunately, you'll miss out on the fun because they've refused you entry. Story of my life. Good night.